cold chach is and enjoying a uh, late morning nap. It's a Friday. Getting in, we're in the later portion of April. And in the beautiful Pacific Northwest city of Vancouver, we're coming off a couple of weeks of kind of rainy spring weather. And I got a day off from my day job and I'll be entering my shop to work on the trophy. Get my mind wrapped around this. I've kind of been away from it for a few days, really, and uh, I'm just going to pick a tune or an album to get started with and uh, get at it. Yeah, that um, video from that you see at the beginning with the water and the mountains is at one of the ferry terminals here called Horseshoe Bay. I've been there all week working on another uh, house. An old uh, post and beam house, West Coast style from the 60s. Really cool. I just jumped in with a different crew as the uh, project that I've been working on. We're, we're a little bit of a waiting period. So I haven't been in my studio all week. Well, I shouldn't say that. I have been doing a few things on the trophy, but nothing that I documented. And I... Uh, Ran into a couple of technical difficulties uh, trying to upload the uh, last couple of videos, so I had to get my uh, my young tech guy Sam to um, help me out. So that beautiful area where the ferries come into, when you're on the ferry system here and you're going through on the waters and uh, the surrounding um, scenery, it, it's unbelievably beautiful. It really is. And that's in a, that, ter that terminal's in a place, uh, Horseshoe Bay. Um, it's in West Vancouver. Now, West Vancouver is indeed its own municipality, and that's one of the things that us Vancouverites get a little bit uh, mixed up. There's a, there's a few things going on with, um, with uh, the West. So we have West Vancouver, which is its own municipality. It's, it's in the, it's a... Uh, uh, lots of the homes are nestled in the hills and you can it's really beautiful over there and it's a lifestyle unto itself then you got the west end which is the western part of the downtown which is in itself its own little um, uh, pretty cool neighborhood I got some good friends that live there I always hang out over at their place and then in the main residential area it's, uh, God, Vancouver West? I don't even know what to call us. See, that just shows you that we're all confused about it. So everybody gets them, nobody even really knows, but there's a few kind of Wests going on. So in the past week, um, my travel schedule was a little bit off. I was uh, going over there, traffic was a little bit bad coming home in the evenings, especially yesterday. There was an accident on the bridge, so traffic got piled back about an hour and a half. I was an hour and a half waiting to get through longer than usual, which, you know, 
And I always think about that if you ever do get caught behind an accident. It's easy to complain and only think about yourself and where you're going. But it could have been like an absolutely devastating situation for families and people and stuff like that. So I always try to think about that. And I just listen to some music and get at it. And uh, try to relax and you, not much you can do. So what I was, uh, I was in here a couple of evenings um, this past week. Um, the last video that I shot, I think, was on a Sunday. I got them uploaded this week with some help from Sam, as I mentioned. I had some trouble. I think they're getting too long, so I'm going to have to start cutting them into smaller segments. And what I did, I just came out and I did some sanding. So I sanded the glove again. I went up a grit. Um, I, did a, I threw a 120 grit all over the glove. And then I sanded in here and in the little crevices. And I did something that I haven't done before is I took my Sawzall and I just taped sandpaper to it. And now mind you, I had to do it like 10 different times because it's pretty powerful. And uh, I was able to, um, you know, put the Sawzall in here and just, get that so that actually worked really good and it was and it was like I, I, I keep all of my old sandpaper so when I'm done uh, sanding something with my orbital I just take the piece off and I throw it in my pile for scraps for things like that and that way you're not uh, really wasting so today I think I'm gonna focus on getting the ball to uh, finish sanding and then I'm gonna to start to design how the seams are gonna go on that. And um, I'm gonna get that ball done first. And I have a few uh, other details that I'll share when I'm doing it. So once I get the ball done, I'm gonna be able to um, uh, start to um, move forward with the other pieces and get everything kinda of in order. But I just, I, I think I'm just gonna focus on the ball today tomorrow it's gonna I'll be doing some other tasks tasks obviously but uh, I'm gonna get that ball sanded and um, yeah and I'll see what uh, what else transpired and you know the idea I do have for the seams I was uh, asking a few people friends of mine what they thought about it and uh, you know, there's even a guy on the new crew, he's worked in the film industry on set designs and stuff like that, and he didn't really have an answer. So my initial idea was little U nails. It's basically a nail that's shaped like a U and two ends are pointed. And um, I think I'm gonna just spray paint them up and, you know, have little pilot holes drilled in and have it all designed out and I'll just jam those in so the, the seams will be elevated a little bit and um, I'm gonna have to do that once I spray paint them I think I'll put them in and then do my um, uh, stain after the fact and that way it'll get in so I'm still not sure about that but getting into the finer points bonuses sometimes about working on some houses and stuff there's usually a dumpster on site so I don't uh, I always just empty my little garbage cans that I have collecting dust in here so I did that yesterday and you know once again there's always really cool people you meet each time you go into a new project now the builder on this one is a friend of mine who used to be actually my catcher many years ago when I was when he was playing on our team and he was a excellent catcher hitter and just a great guy and he has a very successful business and I'm able to hop in with him once in a while which is really thing really a good thing and it just so happens that the head carpenter on this job, who I've never met before until Monday, um, we started talking and we realized that we grew up about an hour and a half from each other in uh, 
New Brunswick. So he was a he's been a good guy to hang out with on the week and learn some stuff from and all that stuff. Yeah, I think I'll do a, I'm just putting a 220 grit on that, and that'll be fine. That'll be the final sanding. I just make sure there's no line showing. It's relatively smooth. And, you know, my hope for the trophy is that, you know, they treat it, you know, of course, take care of it, but you don't have to uh, pamper to it. <clears throat> and then I think I might just go over to my old job site and see how Jay and the boys are doing this week. Um do a little shopping perhaps for my seams for the ball some spray paint and start to get those things ready and uh, I have a bit of a craving for some Vietnamese food today go get some nice warm pho on a uh, kind of chilly rainy day so I think that sounds good and then I most likely will be picking up a uh, afternoon cup of coffee uh, as I uh, do some work here in the studio. Probably just put another 10 minutes on that with a 220 and it's pretty close you know um, after I drill all the little holes in for the seams and stuff and get that all up uh, I'll, I'll kind of touch it up a little bit but you know as I as you work away at it and kind of chip away and then the sanding doesn't all become at one time and it's it's kind of the way I like to do it now I gotta draw some seams on this. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna do that. I gotta look at a baseball here and see what they look like. Um, I'm assuming this is not gonna be an easy thing to um, figure out, but we'll get her figured out. I opted, I opted, sorry, for the, how do you ex explain her voice, sultry, deep, soulful, at sometimes raunchy, um, voice and lyrics of the great Lucinda Williams, who I think I was listening to much of the second video that I posted in this um, series, <laughs> series. Um, Lucinda Williams, you know, is, I, I always heard her name over the years, like, you know, and I never really, I had an idea of, um, who I thought she was. I thought she, I thought she was like a black woman, um, 
uh, you know, sh from the South. But she happens to be, she actually is from Louisiana, but she's not black. She's a, um, a really, she's her own person. And, and as I've learned over the years, many young, art, many artists really love her. She's an artist's artist. Many people have been inspired by her. Um, young and old alike and she has a way of getting like I you know I've, I've described it before like she just gets into your veins like it, however way if you're ever interested and there's a lot of darkness to her writing which I don't have a problem with you know like just because you're listening to sad music or dark music I, I find it's the opposite of being down it's like you know as a human of course we're going to have the uh, gauntlet of emotions but when you're listening to somebody else um sing about it it kind of gives you kind of does the opposite it kind of lifts you up i find it kind of gives you that um little support system so that's the way i look at it and lucinda again like that's off an album called west and um you know, I was doing a little research on that album. Um, I actually really started listening to that album last year when I was in Japan. Like, I was in quarantine. And, um... I was... I had a few Lucinda Williams albums that I've been listening to. Um, and then I was YouTube in it, and I, I came across the songs of that album. And I was really, um... Really digging it. And that song, like, the album, apparently she lost her mother uh, at the time. So a lot of the songs have to deal with the loss of her mother. And I tell you what, like, if you ever lost your mother um, or a close, close one, uh, all I'll do is I'll put out the uh, little disclaimer that album can get you. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty deep. So all, all I'm doing is uh, I took the gauge that I had made earlier. I think you guys, if you guys have watched along, you see I used this to fit the ball, like, you know, to see how round I was. And I just measured out the, uh, a center line right here. And I'm just gonna go around, and I'm gonna try to get my center lines to give me an idea of uh, how to do the seams here. Like a baseball has 100, like in all those red stitches there, Apparently it has 108 stitches, or they're called like a double stitch, if you can kind of see closely, um, or two, six, 216 double stitches in a, in a baseball. And um, it's two kind of figure eight shapes pieced together. And to get that, I'm just figuring out a way to do it. So this is, I'm just gonna try to freehand it, just much like I did the baseball. And um, that's what I'm doing. So when I turn this camera back on, I should have this thing draw, drawn out. Um, my battery's low right now. I'm trying to keep the videos a little shorter. And I'm gonna go back and put that song to the beginning and listen to a few Lucinda Williams songs as I do this and relax in my studio. So that's what I will do. And I think I'm going to end the portion of uh, right here and I'll put this together and see if, see if a shorter time limit works out better for my uploading.